Hi, yoga friends. Michael Miracles here of michaelmiracles.com. Has yoga had an impact on your life? Are you looking to expand on that connection and maybe even share it with others? Or maybe you just really love what yoga has been doing for you and you want to go deeper. I've taught yoga full-time for over eight years. I'm in ERYT 500 with the Yoga Alliance and I've taught over a thousand classes. I've taken part in 10 trainings, tested all these methods and figured out what works and what doesn't. All of this has culminated in Unity Vinyasa teacher training. Take control of your yoga practice today and start changing lives. Go to michaelmiracles.com slash teacher training for more information. Hi, Michael Miracles here at michaelmiracles.com and in Unity Vinyasa teacher training. I'm here to share some effective cueing techniques that can help you transform your classes or if you're just starting to teach to make you feel confident in delivering the yoga class. Generally speaking, keep it clear, concise, directive, and relevant. First and foremost, just call the pose. Say the pose and the majority of the students who've taken a yoga class before will bypass the part of their mind that has to think about what to do and just start doing it. When that part of the mind's bypassed, the ground is more fertile for even just moments of meditation. And we want to have as many of those moments as possible in the class. From there, number two, if it's needed, give a direction. For instance, in warrior one, step your right foot forward, warrior one. That way, the body part will just start reacting immediately to your words. And so there's not that moment of the students like, oh, wait, which foot do I need to move? I know warrior one, but I'm not sure. Right foot forward, warrior one. Give a directive action. Lift, lower, squeeze, sweep up, fold down. An action verb will create an action in the present moment. At this point, then give the breath cue, especially if you're teaching vinyasa yoga or flow yoga. The breath is so important, but it does matter when you say it. A lot of classes lose this precise timing element by sometimes leading with the breath cue. If you lead with the breath cue, the student will start inhaling first, and then they usually won't have enough of the breath to help them get into the pose with more ease, grace, and rhythm. Avoid using passive tense or using long-winded flowery descriptions. For example, as you inhale, right foot is lifting up and stepping forward forming into a warrior one. That just wastes so much time and the student has to wait and maybe you lose the breathing rhythm while they wait for you to get out what you're trying to say. So passive tense also feels less connecting. This is more like you're describing what might be happening instead of directing what is happening. You're not singing them a lullaby. You're not writing them a poem. Oh, things are nice, but not in your yoga class. You're guiding a sequence ideally connected to breathing. Metaphor is in, will get the student in their mind, root down into the ground like roots taking hold in the earth. The student then is thinking about something conceptually instead of having an f- experience in the present moment, a meditative experience. Experience in the present moment is a meditative experience. This is a little bit more nuanced, but again, it does help. Instead of saying the or that, say your. Lift your right arm. Step your right foot instead of saying, lift the right arm up. Because again, that's just that little bit of cognitive dissonance where the student is like, oh, the hand. Everything we say and do in the class as teachers is geared towards having this real life experience in the present moment instead of even a few seconds behind having to figure it out and analyze it. Might do a whole video on this, but... Speak to your student's body and watch to see if what you say has an effect. A lot of times, teachers will have memorized a sequence, memorized even a script of what to say, and they'll make sure to say all the things they memorized, but oftentimes, a lot of what they're saying is not needed. You'll have everybody, for instance, again, Warrior One, having their back leg solid. But if you say, straighten your back knee, and everybody's knee is pretty straight, you're just wasting words, you're wasting time, And another thing is as much as possible, have silence in the class. 
in today's society, we are silent starved. There's always some music playing. There's always some noise, some background noise, people talking. It's nice to have even a few seconds at a time where you're doing something and and experiencing the benefit of quiet, of peace, of silence. Another really powerful strategy you can employ as a teacher to cue with is cueing toward mindfulness. An example of teaching to mindfulness would be move your attention to precisely where you're feeling the most. Aim your attention to where you're feeling the most stretching right now. That can be really helpful to have the student have even one second where they're not thinking about something else. Maximize the mindfulness. Minimize the mindlessness. Here's another important one. This this one, uh, admittedly, I, I sometimes have trouble remembering to do. When you give a cue, let it land. Give it space for the student to try it and to feel it. If you've been teaching for a while, like I have, you know of a lot of cues at the tip of your tongue. Try to resist the temptation to fire off every single cue possible for that particular pose. And instead, give one. Give it time to land. And if something else is required, then give another one. Give it space. Let it breathe. In conclusion, if you start to employ any of these strategies, or ideally all of them, you will quickly feel more powerful as a teacher and your students, they'll tell you, ah, something's happened. That was a great class. Something's different. So usually students can't put their finger on it, but you'll know. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Michael Miracles. Hit that subscribe button. This is one of the first of hopefully many videos that'll help you with your teaching. And that's what I'm here for. I'd love to hear any of your questions in the comments below or if you have any suggestions of other videos that I can make. Just like your yoga teaching classes, it's a dialogue, it's a give and take. So let's have these videos be that as well. The light, the love, the unconditional loving kindness within me recognizes it in you. Namaste.